Hey everybody, I'm here to talk to you guys about uh, <laughs> about AMD and their their future success. Um, I'm I'm gonna consider uh, their future very bright. Um, this is mainly due to their concept with Ryzen. Now this is going to have a lot to do with their GPUs as well. Um, if you look at AMD's roadmap, you also have something called Navi. Uh, Navi, of course, is uh, Navi is a is something into the future. Yeah, it says modularity, uh, scalable. Yeah, because it's scalable, um, uh, it sh it should mean that multiple dies, uh, multiple GPU dies on a GPU, which has been done before, obviously, if you have the 295X too, and the uh, 7990 and uh, the uh, Radeon Pro Duo. Obviously, this stuff has been done before, but it's always been two dies on a board with double the VRAM, and each card really kind of acted on its own uh, or it was treated like two cards so if the game didn't support multi GPU it was really not going to be uh, using half of its uh, power yeah uh, so that can be a serious issue now with scalable uh, dies itself you can have multiple, uh, you have CUs and you have different stream processor accounts, but the different the different CUs um, are can be separated physically and use um, uh, Infinity Fabric, such as what was used on the Ryzen CPUs, to um, Because once the infinity fabric is being uh, implemented, you can have uh, fast communications between these two GPUs. Uh, so instead of being treated like two different GPUs and relying on crossfire support from the developer, you can treat it as one cohesive unit. Therefore, you can have these smaller GPUs that have higher yields and by having these higher yields of course you're gonna have uh, uh, lower costs and the overall price of these GPUs will go down now this is a concept that um, that not only AMD is on board with yeah uh, Nvidia is also very big into this idea so this is something that's uh, that's across the board, really. Unless you look at one competitor. This one competitor should be fairly obvious to all of us, and that is Intel. Intel has complained time and time again that processors are too expensive to make. It's too expensive, so so we have to bump the prices up. Um, so they refuse to innovate and they say well we're just gonna make keep making the dies bigger uh, the more the bigger the die you know the better and we're gonna improve that way which would be all well and good it'd be all well and good if Intel ate the costs of course Intel's not eating the costs they're relying on the consumer to do it for them uh, so they have been bumping up their prices of their top-end uh, CPUs uh, the past few generations, while not gaining significantly on the IPC front. So these are the same chips, essentially, just with more higher core counts. Uh, this is uh, pretty lazy, uh, especially looking at KB Lake. It was all it was was a better, uh, better clock speeds. That was about it, and. 
uh, due to these higher clock speeds. Also, temperatures went up the out the up the roof here, and uh, caused a few more issues for uh, Intel, uh, especially with the new uh, Skylake X, uh, where they decided, well, let's let's take the whole idea of uh, higher core clocks and more core core counts, and uh, hope that that alone, without IPC gains, is going to be enough. Um, that's when you have an issue. That's that's where the issue lies, um, because you're once you rely solely on core count and uh, processor speeds, uh, you start to stagnate because you'll reach a wall. You'll you'll hit a wall and you'll no longer be able to get above uh, where you were. Uh, Intel has been on the uh, 14 nanometer process. I believe it's 14 nanometer. Uh, they've been on that process for far too long. Uh, they've been on it for the past few gens. They're going to stay on it with this 8000 8, series. And that's going to cause stagnation. That's really going to hurt them in the long run. And you're going to see uh, $2,000 processors from them. I guarantee you. Uh, with KB Lake X or whatever they're going to call it. They're going to call it that. And they're going to keep doing this and they're going to run themselves into the ground. Because people like Jay's Two Cents, people like Paul's Hardware, uh, people like this will, well, they'll understand. They'll get it. They will, they will essentially destroy uh, Intel's whole, oh, well, we can do it, we can do it, we can do it uh, attitude. But, See, that's where you can't. You can't do it. You won't. You won't succeed if you cannot innovate. Uh, that's one of the core principles of of uh, economics. If you don't succeed uh, by doing one thing, you have to innovate and do something else. So I think Intel can learn from its mistakes. It does have a lot of money. That's that's for sure. But uh, they will they will uh, have to eat the eat the costs here. They're gonna have to drive the costs down artificially through their through what their capital is currently, because the consumer is only gonna take so much. You're gonna start making chips that are huge. You're gonna make huge chips that cost way too much. People aren't gonna buy them, and you're going to have to cut them down artificially. And the, this artificial cutdown is only going to hurt them uh, because they're going to have to cut existing cores that work, that function properly um, in order to sell these lower end processors that people do want to buy. So people that want the 6 core and don't need the 8 core, they'll buy those instead. So. Uh, They've they've really they've really caught themselves in a bind. They're they're not going to succeed um, for much longer. Intel's days have are numbered. They're they're gonna die. They're gonna die out as a monolith, unable to move, just like their stupid ties, <laughs> their stupid business decisions that even Nvidia can see as a mistake. And now. NVIDIA doesn't see AMD as a as main competitor. They just want to kill Intel now. NVIDIA just wants to kill off Intel, and uh, I don't blame them. Intel has been caught doing terrible things to their competition, especially AMD, um, across the globe. And uh, karma caught, catches up to them. I don't personally believe in karma, but I believe in the people's ability to understand the irony of a company that uh, fucks people over, and uh, they're going to get caught with that. Uh, they're going to have an issue uh, with that. Huh? Uh, so I, I, I don't think they will succeed much longer. And uh, I'd like to hear you guys' opinions on it, and I know this video is fairly long-winded, but uh, it's all out of out of uh, how I perceive the market.
and I think uh, I think uh, we we're poised to see another shift. And uh, honestly, I I can't wait to see uh, Intel's next uh, few moves because they really only have a few options left. Their few options are evolve. Or try to hurt AMD further. They have to further kick them into the ground and make it impossible for them to gain market share. Because the only thing keeping Intel in their place right now, keeping them high and mighty, is the fact that uh, brands like Dell and HP prefer them due to bribes. Bribes in the past. And I have uh, notes at the bottom here to tell you. Uh, uh, and I will, I'll try to source into the description uh, all of the lawsuits that Intel has faced. All of the suits filed against them that all ended in them being the guilty party. Uh, karma's a bitch. <laughs> See you guys in my next